In The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Douglas Adams was wrong. The ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is, Who's a good boy? This week on Bad Things in History, stick around for stories of dogs who answer that question. Pet that subscribe button on its cute little head and enjoy the episode. Mustache was a poodle born in Normandy, France in 1799. At the age of six months, he was sent to live with a grocer. One day, a group of grenadiers marched through town on their way to fight wars in Italy and Austria during the French Revolutionary Wars. Mustache started following the marching troops and kept on following them right out of town. After some time, the troops decided to bring him along on their campaigns through Italy and Spain. Mustache was not a trained military dog, but appeared to be born for the role. While crossing the Alps in 1800, the French regiment was camped in a nearby town. It was also storming and the Austrians planned to unleash a surprise attack that night. Mustache detected the approaching army and alerted the French troops, who were then able to repel the attack. After this act, the colonel of the regiment ordered that Mustache should be officially placed on the roll as a grenadier, and he was able to receive proper rations suiting his rank as well. The regiment's barber was even instructed to comb the dog once per week. A few weeks later, Mustache was on the front lines when another skirmish with the Austrians occurred. This time, he received a bayonet wound to his left shoulder. He was taken to the regimental surgeon where he eventually recovered. Another battle saw yet another injury. In this battle with the Austrians, Mustache found a dog that belonged to the opposing force. He attacked the dog and fought with it until a French musket ended the enemy canine's life. Mustache lost an ear because of that poorly aimed shot. After the battle, Mustache deserted the grenadiers. Supposedly, one of them tried to chain him to a sentry box. So the warrior dog escaped and joined the cuirassiers. He still earned his keep, though. On another occasion, the French were alerted to an Austrian spy in the camp due to Mustache's incessant barking directed at the person of interest. The greatest act Mustache ever performed, according to the military anyway, was when a nearby flag bearer was killed in battle. They were surrounded by Austrians, and Mustache was about to fight all of them until a nearby artillery strike killed all the enemy. Mustache was wounded in the leg. Still, he tore the flag off the deceased soldier and returned it to the regiment. Unfortunately, the wounded leg had to be amputated. At another battle, Mustache gave up fighting because he found a mate. A poodle was seen on the enemy side, and by the end of the battle, she joined Mustache with the regiment. The pair produced puppies that were looked after by the women of the camp. The relationship lasted about a year before Mustache moved on. Supposedly, a member of the cavalry struck Mustache with the flat of his sword one day. Never one to accept mistreatment, Mustache moved on to a unit of dragoons, which he followed to Spain. A colonel in that unit decided he should own the dog and took Mustache home. After 17 days in captivity, Mustache escaped out an open window and joined a gunboat crew. This would be his final adventure. In a battle on March 11, 1812, Mustache was struck by a cannonball and died at the age of 12 years old. He was buried on the battlefield with the medals and ribbons he earned, and with a gravestone that read, Here lies the brave Mustache. Unfortunately, when the Spanish won their war with the French, they destroyed the gravestone, dug up Mustache's bones, and burned them to ash. Gander was a Newfoundland, a family pet originally named Pal, but he accidentally scratched a child's face with his paw. The owner didn't want to put him down, and instead gave the dog to a regiment of the Canadian Army. The soldiers soon changed his name to Gander. He shipped out with his unit when they were sent to Hong Kong in 1941. When the Battle of Hong Kong started, Gander helped the infantry fight off Japanese invaders on three different occasions. What happened during the last battle is why Gander is remembered today. A Japanese soldier threw a hand grenade into a space occupied by several wounded soldiers and Gander. Gander took the grenade in his mouth and ran toward the enemy. The grenade exploded and killed him. Gander's sacrifice saved many in his regiment. Khan was a German shepherd and family pet who was given to a Scottish rifle battalion. 
Lance Corporal James Muldoon became the dog's handler. In November 1944, the battalion was part of an Allied force sent to attack an island in the Netherlands. Khan and Muldoon were in a boat approaching the island when they were illuminated by a spotlight and then targeted with fire. The boat capsized and ejected the occupants. Khan made it to shore and began looking for Muldoon but couldn't find him. Muldoon also could not swim. While under heavy fire, Khan swam 200 yards back out to Muldoon and dragged him to shore. Khan and Muldoon both survived the war and reunited when the war ended. Some of the brave canines in this conflict were also smaller than you might expect. Smokey was a famous war dog and was also a Yorkshire Terrier who only weighed four pounds. In 1944, she was found in New Guinea abandoned in a foxhole by an American soldier. She was passed around until eventually being sold to William A. Wynn. She traveled with Wynn for the next two years, accompanying Wynn on combat flights in the Pacific. She slept in his tent and ate whatever rations Wynn could give her. Smokey did not have any of the veterinary care afforded to official war dogs. Despite this, she was never ill. She even walked on coral for four months in her bare feet and never developed any of the paw ailments that commonly affected the larger dogs. On one mission, she even parachuted to the ground with the troops using a parachute specifically made for her. Wynn said that Smokey saved his life by warning him of incoming shells when they were on a transport ship. She prompted Wynn to duck right when an incoming shell killed eight men standing next to him. Smokey even helped engineers build an air base. They needed to run telegraph wire through a 70-foot-long pipe that was only 8 inches in diameter. Smokey completed the task for them, which kept many soldiers from having to expose themselves and risk being killed. Smokey and Wynn survived and returned from the war, and Smokey even became a national sensation. Smokey died unexpectedly in 1957 at around 14 years of age. During the Vietnam War, the U.S. military typically never allowed military dogs to return home. They were usually euthanized when their service was complete. Thankfully, the practice has been changed in the intervening decades. But knowing this detail is important to understand how special the next dog was. Nemo, A534, was a German Shepherd who served in the United States Air Force. The air base where Nemo was stationed came under attack on December 4, 1966. Robert Thronberg was Nemo's handler. They were patrolling near a graveyard when Nemo alerted him that enemies were nearby. Thronberg told Nemo to attack, and Nemo quickly lunged forward into the middle of the enemy. Nemo suffered severe injuries attacking the Viet Cong. He was shot in the nose. He also had another bullet enter under his left eye and exit through his mouth, which left him with only one functional eye. Thronberg was also shot in the shoulder during the brief fight. Despite life-threatening injuries, Nemo was determined to protect his human companion. Nemo crawled across Thronberg's body and guarded him against anybody who approached until medical help finally arrived. Due to his bravery, Nemo was returned to Lackland Air Force Base in the United States and was given a permanent retirement kennel. He died in 1972, but there are still memorials in his honor on that base today. Dogs are truly amazing animals. Those who are trained from a young age for military service gladly follow their handlers into dangerous situations. Some are just born to be exceptional, as the stories of Mustache and Smokey illustrate. Military dogs were used quite frequently in the ancient world. The Romans, for instance, would breed large attack dogs and equip them with spiked collars and sometimes armor. They would then be sent in front of the army to attack the enemy. The Egyptians, Greeks, and Carthaginians all used dogs to attack in this manner. During the U.S. Civil War, the South trained packs of bloodhounds to attack men. So the Union Army, under orders from General Grant, killed them whenever they were found. For the most part, though, dogs in this conflict were usually used to guard prisoners and send messages. In the 1930s, the Soviets tried using dogs to attack enemy tanks. The dogs were equipped with mines, which would detonate when the dog ran under a tank. The dogs were also trained on Russian tanks, which were usually stationary. When it came time to use the dogs in a real battle, they did not kill any enemy tanks. 
Most of them ran alongside the Russian tanks and were simply shot by the enemy. Some of them supposedly tried to run under the Russian tanks, killing themselves and the troops they were supposed to assist. The United States also tried to use dogs during World War II for direct military action. An island in the Mississippi River was set aside for training dogs to attack Japanese soldiers. Japanese Americans were actually recruited to help train the dogs since there were no Japanese soldiers available. The end result was that the dogs were either too docile, didn't follow instructions, or were too scared of explosions to do their job properly. In terms of providing support though, dogs are still useful even in modern conflicts. At the time World War I broke out, many European communities were already using dogs to pull small carts for deliveries. This was expanded to pull carts that contained weapons and supplies needed for the war effort. The dogs were eventually replaced in 1916 when horses and motorized vehicles became better options. World War II has many stories of canine bravery, and dogs have been present in nearly every conflict since. Much like people, though, dogs vary widely in their temperament and abilities. It is not uncommon for dogs that find themselves in battle to take heroic action to save their human companions. But should we be using dogs this way? Is the fact that they take bullets for people something to be celebrated, or should we feel ashamed for allowing it to happen? What exactly do we owe dogs in return for the service they have given us? Do you have any stories of canine bravery? If so, please share them in the comments below. As always, don't panic, and thanks for watching Bad Things in History.